Welcome to um, quiltedclothing.net. Um, I'm Judy, and I'm going to talk about how I made a tank top using this pattern from Grainline Studios uh, for the willow tank, either a dress um, or a tank top. And I'm just going to show you how um, you adapt this using quilting techniques to adapt the pattern to uh, a quilted garment. So I made this coat um, out of the beautiful quilt, and then I had some extra fabric, extra quilt left over. So I wanted to make a small um, item. So I used the Grainline Studio and created this little tank top. And that's the back. Using a... Um, pattern that's designed for simple fabric and not quilted fabric, um, you have to do some alterations. And the the instructions included with this um, pattern is very specific and it's great, it, but it doesn't address the use of quilted um, material that has essentially three layers with uh, a batting or that that thick um, stuff in the middle that gives it the nice loft. So I'm a size 12. These are my measurements. For using a um, pattern, when we're going to be using smaller seams with quilted material, I chose a size 10. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is going to be the same for both um, quilted fabric or regular fabric. You're going to start with by sewing the darts, and it's just as it's marked in the pattern. And in this um, image, this is the inside of the quilt, and this is the outside. So I'm sewing my darts as described along this line, the dart pattern. But you don't want to cut your the dart seam open. Just leave it as is. Otherwise, that all that batting comes out. All right, so the other thing you're gonna be doing that's different is you're gonna be using a binding fabric um, for the seams and for the edges. And this is a quilting technique. And I'll show you uh, in detail how to do that. So for throughout uh, quilting, binding fabric is used for the edges of the quilt. Um, and for garments, it works perfectly for covering seams up to make finished seams and to make the edges look nice. So I'm going to go through a few slides on how to create your binding fabric um, using a quilter's technique. So first, you're going to pick out some nice fabric that you want for the binding. Um, and you're going to cut two and a half inch wide strips of the fabric. And then you have to make a continuous strip. And instead of just sewing these strips end to end together, um, we want to make a continuous line that's not bulky. And this is how you do it. You take um, these two strips, two and a half inch strips, put the um, front sides together, and then sew along a 45 degree angle, cut off that cut off that little tail right here. And here's your 45 degree angle, right sides facing. And then when you lay it out, it creates this nice continuous seam. And instead of doing it end to end, it makes it so that the seam is very continuous. So this is showing how you use this great, uh, those great clear um, rulers that make it easy to cut your binding fabric. And that's a rotary cutter. And I use that for everything. I love rotary cutter cutters. And in a minute, I'll show you how you open up your seam um, by using the rotary cutter if you want to rip a seam. Okay, so to create your finished seams, the next step in the, um, in the process of putting this top together is sewing the um, right sides together and you're sewing across the shoulder seams. But instead of just doing the shoulder seams together, you're gonna add 
a strip of binding fabric. Um, and that's going to be sewn over top of the seam at the same time using um, like one quarter to three eighths of an inch wide seam as opposed to the seams that are described in usual um, clothing patterns, which are like five eighths inch seams. So it's a smaller seams. And this is another reason why you're using a smaller size of your pattern. So here is an image showing, this is the finished seam, one shoulder seam sewing across the next. And so it's that the two edges together and the binding fabric sewn on top of the seam. Okay. So this is how you flatten the seam down so that you've created this, you've got this, um, this extra binding fabric that's going to cover the raw edges of the seam. So up above this, I've um, shown how I've opened up the seam. This is on the inside of the fabric, inside of the garment. I've laid it down and I've just done this scalloped seam edge. Uh, it's a, you know, one of your seam uh, stitch options for your sewing machine. You can use a zigzag or just a straight seam, a straight um, stitching across that. And that will finish off the seam so there are no raw edges. So next when um, I use quilting fabric, and it's also described actually in this pattern, um, I like to use a wide um, facing. So you can you can create your own pattern for a facing. All you have to do is simply take a piece of paper, lay it across uh, an area where you're going to have this facing. And I just um, took my ruler and measured two and a half inches. And right here is the front of the garment, the center line. So all I had to do is make a pattern that measured two and a half inches all the way these sides, set it on the fold. And I did this with the back as well. And then you have an entire uh, facing for your garment. Super easy to create your own um, pattern for that. And then what you're gonna do is sew your back facing to your front facing, and it's gonna make a continuous circle. And when I say hammer surge the outer edge, you're going to be sur surging or hemming the outer edge of your um, facing. And that's shown in the next here. So here is the folded edge. Here is my created front facing. Now I've sewn it to the back facing, the front facing. I've surged the outside, or you could just hem it, or you could just do a zigzag stitch around that raw edge. And then I take the front um, of, the, of the circle of the facing, and I put it to the circle of the um, front of the um, neck. And then again, this is only going to be a small three eighths, um, maybe one quarter inch wide. Now, if you want your neck uh, opening to be wider, you just put it on before you add your facing, or you can simply make a bigger um, seam around, the, around that corner. The other thing I just wanna um, really um, emphasize is clip your curves. Clip your curves right up to the stitches, but not into the stitches. And that allows it to lie completely flat. So here it is. I've um, clipped up to the edges. And then I'll always, my mother always used to say, use your iron. Ironing makes a great deal of difference as you're sewing. So you're going to iron this out. Iron it so, the, um, so it makes it easier to lie together. So when you turn it over and you create your new uh, new edge here for your, for your neck edge, it folds over well 
And then you can simply take, pick a decorative stitch or just a little, you know, straight edge, whatever, you know, straight stitch across here, and then just hold that down. And then on the inside of your garment against this to stitch, you're facing to your inside of the quilt. You don't want to do this with the sewing machine, sewing these together because it will um, show on the outside of the quilt. So the other thing I did is I um, extended the hem uh, of the garment because I'd like it just a little bit longer. And I wanted round edges around the front. I thought that looked, would look really cute to have these kind of scalloped look around the bottom of the top. Also, it'd make it a little bit easier to put on. So I have this little, um, but you, I mean, obviously you can make your own, but this is just a little ruler that I purchased, plastic ruler to make rounded corners. So the next thing you have to do is you have to make sure this is going to fit. So basting stitches, these really long, um, widen out your stitches and just do a basting stitch. And as, as you're going along, before I forget, the darts, make sure you have, when you do sew for your final seam, make sure you sew your dart going downwards. And you can also iron that art da dart down. So you're going to sew these sides together. Again, three quarter to three eighths of an inch side seam down to where you're going to have your opening of your scallop corner. Then you try it on, check to see um, your fit. Not only your fit as far as the width, but also how big your armholes need to be. Because this, uh, this pattern was designed for regular fabric and big seams. So um, likely in your case as well, the armholes are gonna be too small. So what I did, um, I trimmed my armholes by you know about half inch or so. And the reason I have this glue here is notice anytime you cut into a quilted um, piece that has these tiny little stitches, if you don't um, glue them down, those little stitches will start to come out. So I had to, any places I cut, I would have to glue them down. And then um, the only reason I show this is I can pull apart the seam and I can take out those basting stitches using that, that uh, razor sharp wheel. Or you can obviously just use your seam ripper and just take out the basting stitches. Or if it fits great, you don't need to take out the basting stitches. Okay. So now we're going to, this is the next fun part. Now you take your strips of your long strip of binding fabric. And it might be hard to see because um, you're seeing the wrong side of the strip on top of my mat that I use for ironing. But you need to cut um, like a 45 degree angle off the binding strip, then fold it over. Here you fold it over and you make this nice little wedge. And this will hide the tail as you create this continuous edging around your garment. So again, I use my little iron. I iron down this edge and then I fold it over and iron the whole um, length of binding fabric. So next step, is getting this binding all the way around the garment. Now, I take it back. You take out, you have to take out your side seams, your binding fabric. You, have, you absolutely have to, if you wanna use this technique. Um, so here's your binding fabric. This is the way it's gonna look when we're done. And I'll show you how I get to that. Because I have to describe how you get around corners um, and how you get around to make a 90 degree corner. It's called a mitered corner. So first of all, lay your binding fabric on the right side of the garment. 
So here's the right side. And what I've done is I've pinned here. And what I like to do is put a few stitches at the beginning, but do not stitch over this opening. When you start your stitches, you're going to start a couple inches beyond because this is going to be a pocket for the tail that finally comes around in a continuous seam all the way around. So your sewing is going to be begin right here. And you're sewing this binding fabric, um, the binding edge to your garment. So as you're sewing around the edges, you're going to uh, kind of gently ease it around. See how I kind of bunched it around, getting around the corners. Again, this edging is going to be about one quarter inch um, from the edge. One quarter, three eighths. And then when you try to come up to a corner, this is the next big thing, is you sew all the way to one quarter of an inch from the corner. So I've stopped and the edge is up here, one quarter of an inch away. So I'll stop right there, cut it, cut the thread, lift up, and then you, I'm gonna show you how you make a mitered corner. So a mitered corner is this, where you get the fabric around the edge. And there's a little, um, I'll show you a better picture in a second. So here you are, you've come to the edge, you've stopped, you've cut your, um, cut your thread there. And then you want to be able to fold that strip back. So notice lots of 45 degree angles when you're sewing with quilting. So here's another 45 degree angle. And this edge is going straight with the new seam, with the new uh, edge it's going to create. So you fold it back and then you fold it back on itself again. So the new stitching is going to start here one quarter inch from this edge and one quarter inch from this edge. And here's where it's going to be. And this is the tail that it creates. So this will help, this will, um, is what makes the mitered quarter when you turn it around and you sew the binding on. So again, this is um, sewn up. The stitches come all the way up here. It's underneath this flap. And right here at this yellow dot is where you're going to bring your sewing machine back, put your needle down, and start sewing again along the new, new line. And that'll make your mitered corner. And this is showing what this flap looks like. So you've created these um, corners, you've gone around the whole thing, and then you've come back around and you're gonna have lots of extra. I've already cut it and I want to have maybe, you know, a little bit of a half inch or so that will tuck under here to make your continuous edging. So you're gonna put this inside this little pocket Fold it over, and here it shows how it's um, sewn across. So it makes that continuous. So you're going to clip your curves. Remember on the on the corners, and then always use a little iron. Sew your binding fabric that seam edge right here. Sew it, um, iron it down so it's easier to fold over and. Um, so on the other side. So I like to use this little um, small serpentine stitch. It's on probably every machine. This is a super old machine that I bought um, to help you know me with uh, sewing quilted fabrics. It's more industrial, so it's pretty heavy duty because I do a ton of sewing. So. This is now looking at the wrong side of the fabric, 
This is the wrong side, the inside of the garment. And I folded that, um, I folded the binding over top of it. And now I'm sewing from the other side of the fabric. And it's just sewing this nice little serpentine stitch. This is another image. I'm coming along, sewing this, sewing this strip down over this raw edge. And this is what I've already done. So this is the right side of the fabric, the wrong side of the fabric or the inside of the garment. And this is what the stitching looks like. So the binding will uh, create all your beautiful hem lines. And as you're doing this, you're just gonna be folding over that, over top of that raw edge. So again, this is how you, uh, you're coming now to that mitered corner that you created. And that extra flap gives you the extra fabric to make a perfect um, corner. So I'm gonna sew all the way down here to within a quarter of an inch and then fold over. So I get down here and I stop. And then I fold this corner up and over and here's the, um, it's hard to see it, but there's an, the folded edge. And I'll come down here with my sewing machine and I'll catch that edge and then start in the other direction. So here's a pin in that corner as I turn and I go down the other edge. So in the end, this is what the inside of the garment looks like. This is the outside of the garment and you've made um, a continuous edge around it. Now, this is what I love to do um, to make perfect flat seams. So the reason I love this pattern is that it allows you, so it's nice enough, it's loose enough that you can actually have enough room to open it up and sew the side seams together. And I'm sewing the side seams together by making a, you can do it with a zigzag. I'm making it with that serpentine stitch and I've laid one seam, the front seam over the back seam, right, right side and left side. And I'm gonna sew all the way on there until I pick this point where the bottom comes together. So this is double, this is a double layer I've got the two side, the front and the back together, and it's open across my sewing machine. You just need to be careful that you don't include any of the other fabric. All right. So if you can, you can see that you can, you just overlapping and you're stitching the seam line. And there, the nice thing, this top is, is going to, is loose enough that you can get your seam in there without um, struggling. So here's the other side. So I pick where I wanted to start and I sewed all, so I sewed all the way up to this armhole. So it lays completely flat. And there's the flat side seams. And there is the end. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and I hope you have fun making it. Thanks.